Hey guys, it's Rudar here, and today we're going to go over the 10.2 Balance Druid PvP guide. Now to start off with, we have our talents here. This is going to be your cookie cutter talent build. This is what you're going to play into about 80% of matchups. Um, one thing to go over really quick is what I might get some questions about, is why am I playing Orb Breaker and not Wild Mushroom? Now the reason I don't play Wild Mushroom is because of the complexity it adds to your damage rotation without really benefiting much, except for the slow, which usually isn't that impactful. So the complexity when running, running a Wild Mushroom is you need to have two dots on a target, be an Eclipse, have Wild Mushroom on the target, and then star surge them. But by that point, you're probably overcapped on Asha Power, just wasting damage, or the target just gets dispelled and then you're doing it all again. And you're just wasting so much valuable time and GCDs that it just ends up not being worth it. The higher rating you get, the more people are gonna dispel Wild Mushroom. So personally, I just don't think it's the play. Even if you're kiting somebody, like say you're fighting a melee DPS, you'd always play Thorns into a melee DPS. So if you're kiting them, you don't need a 50% slow on top of a 50% slow. Like you can't get any more slowed playing Mushroom versus playing Thorns. Same with Typhoon, also slows the target by 50%. So personally, I just don't think it's the play um, for damage, rotation, complexity reasons. So I play Orbit Breaker. If you were gonna run it, you drop Orbit Breaker, you play Wild Mushroom, and you drop Umbral Intensity and run two in Waning Twilight. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's actually the best play. I think having a slightly, or it's quite a bit simpler damage rotation, less telegraphed, I think it's, I think it's a lot more viable. Next thing I'm going to go over is the B curse build. So it's the same build, but this is what you're going to play into Warlocks and Shamans. You're going to D curse, Curse of Tongues, Curse of Weakness, Havoc, and Hex. Those are your four things you're going to look out for. If you don't know what those are, you can look them up on Wowhead. Basically, um, they just, things you're going to really want to decurse because you can uh, change the, the tide of the game very, very much into your favor. Or actually, it could go really bad if you don't decurse the Hex. So yeah, definitely run this into Shamans. If you don't run into Shamans and your healer gets hexed and the healer's asking for a dispel and you're not running it, then... Uh, that's not good. You don't want to be in that situation. Um, next, we're going to go our P build. So this build here, we're dropping one in Umbral Intensity. We're playing a lot of the Sun for quicker interrupts. Additionally, we're just running some more tanky stuff. We're running Incap Roar. Now, this is what you're going to want to use in the opener. You don't want to rake Sun in the opener. You want to Incap Roar as many targets as possible. Rake Stun is for if you want to like Shadow Meld Rake Stun if you're running Night Elf. If you're not playing Night Elf, just drop this and you play one of these. But really, there's not a lot of other good options. You can maybe run Thrash, but yeah. that's This is the RMP build. We have Thorns here. We don't want to play that into RMP. We want to play Fury Swarm. And one additional thing into RMP is we want to play BM Trinket or Verdant Aspirates emblem okay this will be a lifesaver into rmp okay next we have those are our arena talents now in arena we are never playing starfall if you play starfall in arena you're you're gonna it's just it's it's not good it's not good the only the only tab you want to play is on blade's edge i think it's good on blade's edge if you're not playing on blade's edge do not play starfall in arena um it is a complete noob trap. Complete noob trap. Like no pro boomy is playing Starfall except for Super Tease. And it, it's only Super Tease. He's the only one who can make the magic Starfall ha like work. But it's still playing in Arena. Okay. Next we have AoE. Um, this is basically the same as last season, but a couple changes here. Um, when you're playing AoE, you're gonna to wanna to run Starburst and Thorns. AoE, you play this on Blade's Edge, or you play it in RBGs. You probably play in RBGs most of the time, especially if you're doing teamfight maps like Gilneas, 
definitely a good team fight map uh, talent build right here. Basically with AoE is we are doing the same thing with Star Weaver where we're doing Star Falls and then if a Star Fall procs a Star Surge, then we're going to use that Star Surge proc over a Star Fall. Otherwise, we just do Star Falls. That's basically our AoE stuff here. Um, yeah, so that's the talent builds. You can import all these talent builds from the guide, or there is a guide, a, a, a super good guide. Let me share my screen and show you guys real quick. Uh, so let's see here. So I made this guide here. This guide is basically everything I know about Balance Druid and all the steps you need to take to get really like rank one. I, I think you could get so much better than Gladiator. This is meant... This is not meant for getting Gladiator. This is meant for getting like multi rank one or playing in tournaments. Like this is like all the secret sauce about everything. So this goes over your perfect keybinds, tips and tricks, macros, add-ons and UI, like literally everything about from like the add-on imports all the way to like UI abstraction with like my UI, how I hide my abilities, other one tricks, like one trick UI abstraction, like Zenlin or the difference between Zenlin and Waz. Like Waz shows all of his abilities, but that's because he plays multiple classes and you have to show your abilities. So it just makes more sense. I go over things like positioning. I go over things like cycloning, what race you play and like different things about it. Additionally, all those challenges, like some of these challenges are a little silly. Some of them are actually really useful. Um, but under each section will be a challenge that you can complete. I got compositions, all the meta compositions. Most of these compositions are like historical compositions, but they really do work if the if the classes are like even okay. If the classes are like super super bad, like let's see. I don't really like honestly all these comps could work. We got win conditions, like how to actually play for a win, kiting guide, pings, how to actually know what the best talents are, like defining the meta what this guide I'm currently going over is. And then also a Q&A section. Um, so like, what's a Q&A? Let's see, let's see here. When do I play Emblem? Emblem is underrated as it gives 5% main stat throughout the game, plays into any high but short burst comps like Sub Rogue, so like the RMP. Um, yeah, we got all this stuff in here. We got stuff about tier sets. Um, yeah, this is like the insane guide. So if like you wanna know everything, that is there. So where were we? Where were we at? So we just did the talents. Let's go over our stats. So we're gonna go haste over verse over mastery. So basically we're gonna go haste over verse over mastery. So this season we're gonna probably end up dropping a little bit of verse to run a little bit of mastery. So see here, for our tier set piece, we're only going to be playing two set this season. We're running Haste Mastery Pants, because these are good. And then we're also going to be running the shoulders. So this is going to be the tier set pieces you want, legs and shoulders. Um, but yeah, Haste first, and then a little bit of Mastery is, is fine. Um, but yeah, DRing your Haste stat is totally fine, because cast speeds and dot tick speeds are always going to be good if they're faster. They're always going to be better. Um, so yeah, that's that's the current stuff. Embellishments. Oh, I almost forgot about embellishments. I'm getting the boots. So I got boots for embellishments. Um, and then I have, let's see here, precog on chest. Yeah, I got precog on chest because the chest tier set piece is the worst stats. So definitely chest tier set or chest precog is going to be the best this season. Um, so yeah, that's that is the gear. We got the talents done. Now let's talk about let's talk about our tier set really quick. So when Eclipse ends, or when you enter combat, enter Dream State, which reduces the cast time of your next two Starfires or Wraths by 40%, increasing your damage by 100%. Now tier sets by default are halved in PvP. However, with Balance Druid, your next two Starfires and Wraths, instead of being reduced to like 20% being halved for cast speed, they stay at 40%. So I don't know if, I don't know if this will proc my PP. Oh, it does, it does, okay. Well, this, yeah. Oh, they reverted it. 
<laughs> okay, never mind, never mind. It's just 20% now. It's just 20%, boys. Oh, no, but it says 40%. No, no, no. It, okay, I think it's bugged. I think it's bugged, but don't, don't tell anybody, okay? Don't tell anybody. Yeah, because it's, like, super fast. So, Dream State, it still reduces, it reduces the damage by 50%, which is right. It reduces the cast time by 40%, which is not right, but don't tell anybody, okay? Because this is big damn. All right, so our two set is like slightly. Let's ju let's just say it's it's sauced, boys. It's it does big damage. So our two set is going to increase the damage of your next two casts. So how do you play around this? So when you're entering eclipse, like, say you you're gonna want to go into solar eclipse like most of the time, especially for single target damage. Oh, I'm actually starfall build right now. That's fine. Um. Your Starfire cast speeds are just going to be faster, which is really nice to get enter Eclipse. But the the kicker here, here's how you do big damage. When you incarn, it gives you see these little divine stars. That's actually a tell me one for Dream State. Um, basically, when you enter incarn, it cancels your Eclipse, which means your other Eclipse ends, which gives you two Dream State procs. So those Dream State procs, while you're in your incarn, will hit really really hard because you have all your like buffs up and stuff. So you can use those dream set procs on like a warrior balloon starfire i would use them on starfires and not wraths you could use them on wraths if you don't have warrior balloon procs um but if you do have warrior balloon available then i would send your dream state on starfires because it'll hit a little bit harder with incarn um especially it'll do a lot of aoe since we're running soul to force and umbral intensity so like if you fight um Anything with a lot of pets or, or like a melee cleave that are all stacked up with your starfire, it will do the most damage with your incarn up. So yeah, that's our dream state. Other than our incarn, it's just used to enter eclipse quicker. Um, yeah, that's basically our two set. Now let's go over some damage rotation stuff. Let's actually just do AOE first since I'm already spec into it. We're gonna do AOE here, but against one trading dummy. If there's more more targets you just dot more targets that's as simple that's that's the only change you just dot more targets if there's more targets so we're dotting this guy up star firing we use starfall over star surge starfall over star surge okay let's say there's this situation where i have enough astro power for a starfall here but i have a proc we're going to use the proc first and then we're going to starfall so the star surge procs take priority over the default star falls and then when you're doing aoe you're not going to cast wrath and go into starfire eclipse you're actually just going to go into your wrath eclipse because or your solar eclipse because you want the increased astro power regeneration from soul of the forest so here i'm going to put up dots and say there's a bunch of targets i'm still going to be going into my solar eclipse because notice how much astro power i get from each wrath like, it's a lot. So, that's basically the rotation. Keep your dots up. Um, one thing to note is you actually don't need a redot like I was doing right there. With your Aetherial Kindling talent, watch my dots duration. They go down, but they don't really go down. So, if you have dots on somebody and they're like halfway over, you don't need to redot them. Or if they're like, say they're in that like last quadrant and you want to do that like snapshot dotting or like the where like if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i don't know what it's called but we dot it where it's almost over and it like extends it into the next dot duration you don't need to do that you just star fall and every time you star fall you uh you extend the duration and they'll never fall off if you're just doing like unless you get cc'd for like a 10 seconds straight like they're just not gonna they're not gonna fall off so yeah, that's your damage rotation for AoE. You are entering your solar eclipse for AoE. That's, yeah, that's it. Now for single target, uh, let's, let's exit combat here. Change our talents. Single target's basically the same thing. You're just pressing star surge only. It's, it's really that simple. You're just gonna be pressing star surge and there's no rattle the star stacks you have to maintain anymore. It's so simple. Let's see here, let's go to our single target. Single target, we're gonna always run Alcon Adapt and Mukonora. You never change these two. Yeah. That's right, I should go over my double DPS build too. If you play double DPS in twos, um, I'll, show you the, I'll show you the loadout after this. So like, 
put your dots up, enter Eclipse. You can macro your Warrior Balloon into Starfire if you want. And then you're just going to Fury Balloon once you have everything up. Your Eclipse up, your dots up. And this is it. There's no, like, there's there's no maintaining around all the stars. Like, it's just, this is it. It's nice. When you don't have Mushroom 2, this is it. This is all you're doing. You're uh, staying in Solar Eclipse. And you are keeping dots up. And you're not overcapping on Astro Power. That's it. So that's that's our single target rotation. Um, let's go to the double DPS build real quick. And I'll show you kind of how to play with it. Um, I think double DPS is actually really strong for Boomy. People just don't. They don't know how to play it. They don't know like the, the talents. You can actually heal more than your enemy healers in twos. As the balance should. And still do a lot of damage. There's like. Couple of talents you can play around to do that. So, talents we're gonna go for that is Protector of the Grove and Master Shapeshifter. And then once Incarn resets here, I'll change over to my other talent build. Um, let's see what what else. Uh, let's see here some compositions that are strong right now. I would probably be playing, I think Ellie Boomy, DH Boomy with really any healer, and then. What else? What else is good? I do. I swear. Okay, yeah. Outlaw Rogue, Outlaw Rogue, Balance Druid, Disc Priest is broken. And that's got to be the best comp right now. Outlaw, Disc Priest, um, Boomy, broken, completely broken. All the Outlaw does is gouge the healer into a kidney shot, and then or gouge into a chief or something, and just walks over to the DPS like off cooldown. It's so simple. It's so simple. And you're just root beam the healer like you don't have to do that much um yeah outlaw boomy disc when you play that comp just don't overthink it very much and it actually just kind of it kind of just works so well so let's take a look at our double dps build so we have convoke and we have some other saucy tech here we have part of the wild and swift men so how does this all work how, how do you play around this in twos so usually what I like to do is in twos, you want to send your first burst like right away and try to get some pressure and ride that as long as you can. Um, but when it comes to living, you can shift out of form. You can even be in form and start convoking and shift out of form and it'll just spam a bunch of heals on you and it will top you instantly. And your swift mend with master shapeshifter will also heal more. So you can Swift Men 2 to heal. Now, here is where this falls apart. If they go you, it's not that great for keeping yourself alive. If they go your DPS on your team, it's really good for keeping your other DPS alive. So the reasoning behind this is because Protector, Protector of the Grove only works on an ally. So your healing is really boosted the most when it's used on an ally. What you can do sometimes though is heal like your teammate and then heal yourself with the protector re regrowth uh, quick casts. Let's see if I can heal that guy. Yeah, yeah. So now I can cast on myself. But like, if I were to just do it on myself, I'm not going to get that quick cast. So you can kind of play around that. You can heal and then throw a Swift Man, like 136k non crit. Like, Swift Man renewal with a regrowth will just like instantly top you. You Heart of the Wild will instantly top you. Like, let me show you this, this uh, Heart of the Wild healing. It takes some fall damage here. I probably have to proc my Wild Hound. I don't want to die, though. Watch me die. Okay. So now I'm going to heal this guy. Oh, no. That, that okay. I'm going to heal somebody. I'll get my Protect of the Grove, and then I'm going to... Oh, if I die, I'm going to die. I died. Oh, no. Okay, I'm back up. I'm back up. I'm back up. This is scuffed. I, I don't plan on editing this. Okay. All right, we'll die. We don't. We. Okay, 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 okay. We're not gonna die. We're not gonna die though. Okay, that's good. We're gonna heal this guy. And watch this convoke. Halfway through, and it's top me. In arena, if you have hard of the wild up and you convoke out of form, it is disgusting. It is disgusting heals. You can live for like. 10 minutes 
So yeah, the double DPS build is pretty crazy. I think if you have a good DPS on your team, like you could actually rock this like really high rating. So like it, it has so much potential. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to be the guide. Uh, make sure to check out that guide in the description that has literally everything. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.